Ellie Blackburn. And I'm Bonnie, too good. And this is... Off the Leash. Proudly brought to you by the Pancake Parlour. Lovely. Alrighty, we are back for another edition of Off the Leash, where it's been a, a long time between drinks, Bon. It has. I actually was walking in here and they're like, when's the next episode? I was like, we're actually going in to record right now, which is really exciting. So finally, we're going to bring out a, another number. Another number. It's been a big couple of weeks. Mate, it's been a huge couple of weeks and we're going to dive into it. We're going to get straight into our special guest yep. immediately. You're going to plug the intro and then we'll dive into what the last couple of weeks have looked like because it has been <laughs> chaotic it's been a lot, but... And we'd get two different perspectives at bringing our guest in on this one too. Absolutely, we do. So, without further ado, our guest today is one of our teammates. Yes. And you know what? She hasn't played footy for a hell of a long time. No, She no. was a rookie. She got picked up as a rookie in 2018. Prior to that, played a few years at um, Carlton VFL W as a, Jeez. As a ruck forward. Yeah, I Maybe. can see that. She's a twin and um, yes, she actually gave us one of our favourite feedbacks of the podcast thus far and that's she basically has. the main reason as to why we've got her on today. Absolutely it is. Um, if you go reason. back a couple episodes, we, we <laughs> divulge what the feedback was and we were yep. very happy. So today we have Celine Moody. Celine Moody. Thanks, guys. Uh, stoked to be on the podcast. What a turnaround that was, almost insulting it after round one and... Here I am. <laughs> we would have thought. <laughs> it was a backwards compliment that you gave us because we were saying we were like you pretty much said to us that you were you were surprised and shocked that you actually listened to the whole thing and didn't turn it off. Like, Yeah, definitely. I thought it was going to be a little bit of a tough listen. You know, sometimes <laughs> when friends put out vlogs or, or podcasts, you sort of listen in support, but there's a few cringy moments. But um, you guys were great. Yeah, it definitely surprised me. And... <laughs> Yeah, now look at me now. <laughs> look at you now, you're on the pod, so yeah, just give us good feedback and we'll get you on. It's as simple as that. Mate. But we were very, we were chuffed. We literally walked out of the locker room and we looked at each other and we're like, that was good feedback. That was great feedback. <laughs> Thank you, Moods. So Thank you, Moods. We were genuinely very appreciative of that. So you've been now a big fan of the show <laughs> and now you're on. I am, yes. I'm stoked to be here. Full circle. So can we talk about the past couple of weeks? Yeah, let's dive in. Let's let's just get it out there so everyone can hear where we're at at yep. the moment. How are you feeling, Ellie? Oh, mate. <laughs> If you asked me a week ago, it would have been a completely different answer. Two weeks ago would have been an even more different answer. Mm. Now I'm feeling um, much so on the other side of, of it. I feel like I'm, I've, I could probably improve in the, in the next day or so, but in comparison to where I was at, I feel a million bucks right now, which is, which is great. We'll take a million bucks we'll any day. It. We did try, attempt our own little um, at-home DIY just check in with the pod. Yep. It was an interesting number. We were very congested. Con very congested, very <laughs> nasally, <laughs> hiding the fact. We had to do a few takes, actually. The one that you would have recorded, I had a little bit of <laughs> a drop of You had a symptom. Number. You had a symptom. <laughs> I had a symptom <laughs> coming out of my nose, ones. and I'm literally like, we can't use this video <laughs> because <laughs> that is it's showing how too unwell much. I am right now. But we were obviously in ISO moods, and, and you were not. And... Training was still going on at the time. What was that like while we kind of were dropping like flies and, and you still had to come in and, you know, go about your business? Yeah, I've got to say it was a little bit eerie there, um, almost sort of pre, pre, pre-season vibes, you know, when people start filtering back through the club. Yeah. Um, but glad that there was still enough people out there to have a little bit of a kick to kick with. Um, <laughs> just. And, and yeah, just. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely missing the girlies. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's good that everyone's sort of come out of it and we're, we're all back out on the track now, but definitely an eerie couple of weeks there. I could imagine it was it was weird for us, to be honest, like missing a session for you and I is oh. a stressful time over pre-season. I think we had one close contact incident and we were texting each other like, how, could, how can this be our life right now? And then as we've kind of had to adapt over this whole season last year as well, going into ISO and- um, In and out of it. In and out of ISO, yes. But missing training is such a weird feeling. But it would have been even weirder with us 
like a lot of the group not there also. Yeah, definitely. And for you, you had your own personal <laughs> COVID experience, mate. Like, and and this was probably the starting point for us where it became probably a bit more closer, like to home with it. Because obviously, um, you know, we we'd experienced a couple of close contacts, and we had a couple of moments in the in the early preseason where where people were like we didn't know if they had COVID or they'd been exposed or if they were close contact. So we had to isolate a couple of times. But, mate, you unfortunately got struck down pretty early with it. Yeah, I did. Um, first cab off the rank, yeah. Bulldogs <laughs> clan. Um, shocked by me. example. Yeah, yeah I think it, it shocked me a little bit, I suppose, not knowing anyone either like personally, either through work or friendship groups that it had it. I was sort of the, the first person that I knew Um and I probably wouldn't have known unless we didn't get the tests done regularly at yep. the club. Um, but yeah, it got to like a, a Friday night and Dr. Gnomes had seen something about there being a case at the races and I had been at, at the races on Cup Day. Um, but I just replied and said, no, I wasn't in any of those zones, but funnily enough, haven't got haven't got the result back yet. Or we may be able to look into that. <laughs> and she pretty much called me back and said they've had to retest it. It's a positive. And I just, I think all the blood drained from my face. Um, and yeah, then two weeks at home and unfortunately knocked a, a few trainings out for the club. But um, yeah, got mine out of the way early and <laughs> sort of had to, had to push through while all of you guys were a little bit delayed. Um, but no, I'm, I'm feeling good from that. No lingering effects other than a little bit of loss of smell. But that's, still? If that's the, yeah, a little oh, bit. Still but if little that's, bit the, um, that's the worst of it, then I think I can live with that. Yeah, right. Yeah. I never had the loss of smell or, I, no. or the taste one that, I had that the, went. Did you I had have the fever. The, yeah, the fever. Did you lose taste or anything like that? Was no, loss of taste? No taste. Didn't even notice the loss of smell until after. Mm. Um, came back in the change rooms and like no, nobody was stinky or anything like that when he came yeah. back here. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was bad. But no, yeah. That's a really good joke, Ellie. <laughs> sort of just like fever and aches throughout and then, yeah, yeah it wasn't until later I mm. realised that the smell was a little bit affected. Wow. That's it. That's so amazing. And, like, we've all had three very different experiences with it, I would say. But, I mean, we've been, yeah, like what we mentioned, we've been had so many instances throughout the preseason where it happened to us. And then we, we were adamant. I feel like a lot of our players decided that I'm pretty much not going to go out and do things. Like, I know for mm. me personally, like, I stopped seeing my family, went and basically isolated, went to footy, went home if I had to go to like the shops to buy anything for groceries that was the only thing I did <laughs> and here's me at the Melbourne Cup <laughs> <laughs> no, this was later on down the track for us yeah, so yeah. this was like only in the last few weeks so I was doing everything I could to basically not get it I mean doing certain media commitments but in the lead up to actually getting or testing positive for me it was I tested negative on the Thursday the Friday Sunday did two tests on the Monday, one in the morning because I was doing the W show. Mm -hmm. And then that night at training, no symptoms, nothing like that. Felt perfectly fine. Literally woke up Tuesday morning. I was like, I think I have COVID. And I was like, where <laughs> where has this come from? Meanwhile, my phone mm. starts ringing. I'm like, oh, it's Ellie. <laughs> What's happened? <laughs> I pick it up. I'm like, I've got a test, don't I? She's like... Yeah, just do a test. And I was negative in the morning and then it wasn't till training that night. On the at, same day. Same day, results. training wow. that night. Um, it came on within a matter of hours for me. Yeah, I was like, I felt fine in the morning and then throughout the day just progressively got worse and was like, I'm definitely going to bring back a positive on this <laughs> test. So I'm just going to keep the car running and just wait for the phone call that you've got to go back home and <laughs> that it did. Um, but did you guys notice the, the change in the group chat? So all of a sudden it was like... I'm positive, I'm positive, I'm positive. <laughs> and then it flipped to like, actually, I'm negative. I'm and still negative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm still negative. How am I negative? I've been around all you girls. <laughs> and everyone was just like, oh, but I'm still negative. I think, it, like, I think it also became quite com comical being out in the, in the car park, sort of everyone that was left standing would filter in for the, for the rat test before training. And then there'd be a couple that ended up having to do the, the drive of shame back out, <laughs> having just returned no, no, a positive no, rat and we no. all <laughs> wave them goodbye. And sure enough, then in the chat later, yep, there's another one gone. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> Yeah. It was a, it was a, a fairly bizarre time and probably couldn't have predicted that it was yeah. going to happen for our rounds no. too and then affecting also 
round three. Round and three. As, as disappointing as it is, I guess, for what's happened in the past couple of weeks, for me personally, to have the club put our, put our health and safety first has been a huge tick and, and just Agreed. a reassurance because I was fairly anxious leading into the Carlton game, which we'll get into more. But um, just with how I was feeling and after COVID and, and the fatigue factor was uh, was a number that I was struggling with. I'm not sure about you. I think it was oh, pretty yeah. similar. Yeah, definitely lingered the, the fatigue and energy levels. That first training back on the Tuesday, <laughs> it was quite funny. <laughs> Berkey had the mids for a moment and was sort of, W- were you part of the group moods? Were you there? Yes, when, so, yeah. And he was somewhat giving us a little bit of a clip and we were all just standing there like hands on hips being like, yeah, like totally agree, Berkey. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all the COVID affected people, we kind of walked away and we're like, why was he having a go at us then? <laughs> like we, we couldn't really comprehend what was actually happening. Had the COVID fog yeah, brain going. brain fog. So, I mean, it was an interesting experience, but you mentioned it a second ago, Bon, all the COVID stuff happened. Fortunately, we couldn't play rounds two and three. And that just so happened to play on um, our Pride round, which I have no doubt that the club's doing everything they can and the, and the league's doing everything they can. So we can wear these incredible jumpers designed by Nat Gills um, in the, at some stage throughout this season. But round three is a big, big event for the Moody household. It's a, it's a, the Prosparkas... Um, sisters tried to claim their own cup but the Moody Cup's already been running for a few years. It has but um, where is the trophy been? I don't know they must have been keeping that one hidden. But It's uh, actually a um, the Pancake Parlour lovely mix oh, is, the, even better. is the trophy. Even better. <laughs> so just because we haven't played them we'll, we'll say that we, you won it. Oh, yes, so yes. Thank you, who's we'll, the real winner here? You can oh, take yeah, that home to Bree and be like <laughs> I won. Yes, well, <laughs> but what is that experience like? And and obviously we didn't know until sort of later on that we weren't going to play round three. The build up for that game for you, what what's that like? You see it in the fixture. Do you mark it out? What I do. It? Yeah, it's sort of the um, as soon as we we get that one, we put it in the extended moody chat and let <laughs> everyone know that this is when it's going to be played, and whoever nice. can get there get there, or everyone in Queensland might get together and and watch it up there. Um, always exciting to see it. I was a little bit disappointed that it um, unfortunately couldn't go ahead this year. I think because the first two games that I played against her in previous seasons, the novelty hadn't quite worn off yet. I'd run out there a little bit excited, you know, (laughs) probably not as focused on, on my footy as I could have been. But this year I was really feeling like I could have put a good foot forward against her. She's the uh, last year's All Australian ruck, and I think I would have um, surprised her with how I've developed mm, this mm, year absolutely. myself as a ruck. Um, so I'm a little bit disappointed that I don't get to have that one-on-one battle with her. And um, I think, yeah, the family's a little bit disappointed that they might have to wait until next year for that clash match. Although, yep. who knows what will happen later in the season? <laughs> that is true. That um, is true. But yeah, pretty much playing on her previously probably wasn't focused on my footy enough as it was um, but this year was definitely excited to to show her what I got um, what I've got but unfortunately wasn't able to yeah have that one-on-one is there ever like a little bit of back and forth like a bit of chatter uh, between you two in those games yeah yeah definitely there is Um, (laughs) I love it I think the first year that we played on one another, we'd actually both left from the farm in the morning. And I think I actually drove her to the club too. Um, I woke up, (laughs) braided her hair for her in the morning. And then Wait. she annoyed me because then we got to the ground and she'd taken it all out. Oh. And I sat there braiding her hair and only for it. Oh, I didn't like it. It was getting too fluffy. Oh, um, that break. annoyed me. Also, we had gotten about 10 minutes down the road and she'd forgotten her training, her warm-up top. Oh, well, that's her around. issue, mate. And I'm, you know, army discipline with my timings. Yep. Um, so couldn't afford to go back and get it, although we did. Um, also a little bit of a pushover when it comes to her. <laughs> um, having a twin. So yeah, I do run out onto the run out onto the field and take the piss out of her for a few things, like her hair and <laughs> how I had done it and she wasn't wearing it. <laughs> Have you properly sledged each other though? Like has there been like any funny appropriate sledges that that have happened? Uh, funny, yes. Appropriate, probably not quite for this podcast. <laughs> okay, can okay. You, can you no, give a us few, a G-rated A few version? jokes about um, 
few jokes to catch her off guard, maybe taking the piss out of family members, but then in turn also taking the piss out of myself because yeah, yeah, they're yeah. my family members as well. But um, <laughs> it is always a little bit of fun. But I think she, what she's been able to do in the past is that then she gives me absolutely nothing back and throws it back on me because then I feel like an idiot for having said anything, trying to throw her off her game. But then it comes straight back at me because she's a brick wall. Oh, oh. mate. And then I'm the one that feels bad. So I've practically just sledged myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That would be worse. Yeah. Just the, the blank, oh. I'm not going to even acknowledge your existence kind of vibe. Exactly. That would be more of a, like, a punch to the gut. Yeah. Ooh. And that was yeah. what I was prepared to do to her had we have played them on the weekend. <sighs> Didn't get the would have loved to see that. That would have been fantastic. Yeah. Mood I'll just show you brick wall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> still face brick wall, mate. Oh, I can imagine. And you have done a lot of work. Um, I've seen it firsthand in the off-season um, and pre-season and obviously like throughout these these last few weeks, working hand-in-hand with, with our newly established ruck coach, um, Jimmy Mate, t- talk us through what that's been like for you. Just it's the first time you've had a ruck coach here. I know we've had coaches that have sort of been able to assist you and help you in in different ways, but official ruck coach is his role. So what's yeah, that like? It's um, done wonders for the skills and the confidence. Yeah, I think too having sort of someone that if match sim isn't going great, I can step aside and talk to them and them give me that direct feedback. You know, you're a little bit early or you're a little bit late or you're doing this a bit too vertical um, and really being able to then, instead of waiting till later and trying to have conversations with different people about what I'm not doing right, sort of getting that feedback instantly Mm -hmm. um, means I can progress a lot quicker with my game and then through doing that, that obviously helps the confidence. So um, I feel like, yeah, James has has done wonders and I'm very thankful and grateful that he's here. Your confidence has gone from strength to strength even the other night when we were in the ruck together. It's an issue for this one. <laughs> so I um, struggled straight, undecided. Throw, I was like, exactly. I'm going to try throw something at it. I was like, I'm not going to jump. So I told Rocky, I was like, I'm not going to jump for this one. Just read the tap. Didn't really work because they still, you got, I think the other team still got their clearance. But even then you came up to me after that and was like, that was actually really good. And in the past, I don't think you've had confidence to be able to use your voice and give feedback to someone who I'm a, definitely a developing ruck. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm doing most of the time, but um, that confidence in your game has been just going strength to strength. And it's been amazing to watch over this preseason. I'm stuck and I'm excited rolling into the rest of what our season will be um, to see you keep growing because it's it's going to be exciting stuff. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I'm excited as well. No, I think so. I think so. Now, wait, let, let's turn away from footy for a second. Let's dive into a bit of Moods' personal life. We can touch back on footy. <laughs> well, we always round it out with we, footy, we so do. we need to like diverge yeah, off on yeah. a little tangent first, Yeah, if that's cool with you. Yeah, that is more than fine. Beautiful. Let's talk your current career outside of footy. Army. Yeah, Mate. so uh, been in the Australian regular army for five and a half years now. Um, I say regular army because a lot of people assume that I'm a reservist whilst also juggling footy, but I'm not. I'm in full time. Uh, I work as an information systems technician, which yep. is a pretty fancy way of saying um, IT or it's an IT based role predominantly. Um, however, I do a bit of military um, driving instructor as well. Love getting around in the big um, G-Wagon 6Bs. Nice. Um, but yeah, I lo- love the army for the active lifestyle that it encourages. Um, always been more of an outdoorsy type of gal. Um, and love the fact that they accommodate and support me playing footy as well. That's awesome. I yeah couldn't have couldn't have thought that they would be as encouraging and supportive as they have been. Um, so that's been amazing as well. Kudos to them and the way that not only me they support girls and and other clubs just as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm a soldier. <laughs> You're a soldier. You wear a uniform. What's like the one thing out of like that you've taken in your own life from being in the army? I think it's done um, wonders for my independence. I and I joke with the family. I'm a very different person now to what I was before I enlisted. Um, I used to be a very messy, you know, 
uh, had a terrible work ethic. I actually got fired from the local fish and chip shop twice because I'd want to go to the want to go to Fountain Gate on a Friday night instead of working. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Fountain Gate, mate. Yeah, out at Olden as it was up. Yeah, very good. But uh, now I don't really have a, a choice with the, the work ethic. You know, <laughs> the first few months at, at Kapoor can knock that lack of work ethic right out of you, and now I'm um, yeah pretty disciplined in that regard, and yeah very different more independent discipline person all for it what made you want to join the army like it's it's a huge decision to make and such a big call like what was a what was a process leading up to it what made you make that decision and yeah how did it how did it come about yeah well a, a long-term goal of mine is to one day get into victoria police it's something i've wanted to do since i was 13 or 14 years old and i did work experience at a police station through school and through that experience sort of spoke to them about the pathways of getting in and I was encouraged that um, straight out of school they probably you know wanted someone with a little bit more life experience yep. so then I looked into you know ways of getting life experience and that sort of thing um, was never too academically focused in school um, <laughs> probably Freaking only mate. really yeah, <laughs> <laughs> probably only really stayed at school for the sport um, I was Preach always again a, yeah, <laughs> captain of something and, and sports captain in year 12 um, so that was probably the saving grace for mum and dad the yep. school had a great sports program um, so sort of yeah looked at a way of getting life experience but also still enjoying the active aspects of life and you know what better combination than the the army um, it was the first first time I had uh, sorry hadn't known anyone that had enlisted you know I didn't have a, a direct tie in the family and no friends um, from school or anything like that had ever talked about it so I was sort of a a, a pioneer amongst my school and, and my friendship group sort of delving into that little niche or what I thought was niche at the time um, little career choice but uh, looking back now yeah I wouldn't wouldn't swap it for the world I've gotten so much out of it and the, the relationships that I've got out of it as well I've got friends you know everywhere around Australia and um, yeah love it but got there because it wasn't academically focused and wanted a bit of life experience and yeah, yeah. Mate, that's awesome. Have you had to travel far for for being in the army? Like, where, where are the different places that it's it's taken you? Um, I suppose whilst also pursuing footy, I have limited my army career to a degree. Um, there's people I've worked with that have done tours overseas, yep. um, but obviously due to playing footy in Melbourne, I haven't ventured too far at all. Um, I did a couple of years out at Puckapunyal, um, a few months in, in Holsworthy in Sydney, yep. um, and then not too far down the road now at Watsonia. Yep. Um, so yeah, like I said before, very grateful of, of the army accommodating me in that regard. Um, I'd actually, before Paul Groves initially contact me, contacted me about the um, potentially coming on as a rookie, I'd, I'd accepted a three year posting up to Townsville. And I'd sort of just come to terms with it. I remember sitting in the car, bawling my eyes out one night with mum and dad um, saying, I've done it, accepted it. I'm going up to Townsville for three years. It was sort of gonna be my big, um, first dose of independence away from the, the family yeah. um, other than Kapuka and that initial training. Uh, but yeah, then it was the very next day that, that Grovesy mm -hmm. got in touch and uh, didn't <laughs> end up going this. to Townsville at all, went yep. out to Puckapunyal instead. <laughs> um, <laughs> all that tears for no reason, maybe. Yeah, exactly. yeah, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I just tell people they're happy tears. <laughs> happy tears. <laughs> <laughs> so what does it look like for, what's a day in the life of soldier moods then rolling into AFLW moods? Um, I suppose it's probably not what a lot of people think it is. I could, I'll give you an example of a, a more exciting day. Yeah, I'll, I'll combine go. maybe a few days of a week into one and we'll just All pretend right. that's what I do. Okay. Uh, so I might wake up early and, and head to the WETS. The WETS is a weapons training simulation centre or system or that's where we'll practice um, firing our semi-automatic styres and making sure that we're still, you know, if things turned terribly we would still know how to use our weapons um, yep. so I might go do that for a little bit make sure I've, I've got good aim and then probably want to take the uh, the 6BG wagons out for a bit of a bush bash mm -hmm. um, <laughs> because I'm a military driving instructor I can do that yep, nice. so I might jump in and, and tick them over um, and then I've probably got to get back to 
my actual trade, which is the IT um, based job. So I might watch the boys work on the servers, obviously not, <laughs> <laughs> won't uh, step on anyone's toes and get involved myself, more than happy just supervising and they'll probably have a little bit of laugh about that if they hear it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then about two o'clock I'm in the car and head home and get changed and throw the, the training kit on and come on into glorious Witten Oval. Yeah. And yeah, then we hit the track running. It's a, it's a long day for you. Like it is, but yeah, they are they are very supportive. If I um, said to work, you know, I'm feeling a bit run down, then they'll sort of let me take it easy. That's um, awesome. Mm. But yeah, it can be big days. But um, and how important is that to have? Like I know from personal experience as well, um, to have an employer that's just so supportive and so understanding of your footballing commitments. It's I think it made, makes a huge difference for when you're here as well, is that like you're not stressed about it, you're not overly worried or anything like that. I mean, for me, it's like, oh, like I feel like I'm letting him down, like I, I just want to, you know, do the work that I need to do. But like they're also so understanding, they're like, no, 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 like you do you, like we understand that you've got football as well. Like how important is that in an AFLW player at the moment? Yeah, oh, incredibly um, important. I think it makes a world of difference. Like you said, coming to training, not having that weight on your shoulders of, oh, everyone's still at work for another three hours and here I am sort of left early or yeah. um, that sort of thing. But yeah, knowing that they understand sort of I don't just go home and, and sit on the couch. I'm sort of leaving one job and, <laughs> and heading to another. Um, and yeah, having their support and um, them being so accommodating, I think it yeah, awesome. can really, you know, allow you to focus on your footy and get the most out of every session. No, oh, I love that. I Do love you need that. like, I know we've spoken about this before, because like your days go, 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 you get home, you get changed, then you go again to come here. Do you, where's, do you have like five minutes where you just need to take yourself away and just have a moment to be like, collect yourself and then like be here and present for footy? I do, yeah. Okay, so I may have told a little bit of a fib earlier on. Hopefully no one from work's really listening. I, I, I leave oh, work... Hopefully at, they are. We'll send them, we'll send them the link. <laughs> we'll, we'll send them the link. Yeah. Um, I leave work at two and I probably don't leave home until about three to head into the club. So I do have a little bit of time at home where I'll get changed and... Um, almost coming up to a year having the greyhound Wilbur at home oh, we love Wilbur. Um, so I'd say that little switch off turnaround point is when I get to take him out for an early afternoon walk um, it's it's great sort of heading home um, in between jobs and he's always there smiley faced and wagging tail and then <laughs> the same when I get home from training later um, so I think he helps me sort of turn it around and reset um mm. he's always so happy to see me and i'm always so happy to see him so that probably helps yeah <laughs> that's awesome does franklin do the the same thing for you may like is he just no <laughs> franklin's out some baking he doesn't care if i come home <laughs> he's like oh she's home great <laughs> i'm here taking in the sun <laughs> oh that's so good to, to have that outlet though i um yeah it's what a joy to have a dog that's like it's just the nicest thing ever to come home to sometimes and, is, and yeah. to have their loving face Wilbur, if you're listening i love you boo <laughs> <laughs> this one's for you <laughs> i love you franklin <laughs> love you Wilby. okay <laughs> okay we love, that, we love the dogs <laughs> we love our doggies now that we've had our moment <laughs> let's yeah. keep moving forward okay yes moody family they're pretty big family like an important family. An important family. Mate, you guys are somewhat pretty like popular and famous and all that. Like you're out and about. Family's a pretty well known name. Yeah, I think we don't, you know, we don't shy away from a little bit of a <laughs> a little <laughs> bit of media or a little bit of uh, being out in, in town. Pete and, definitely in doesn't. No, Pete <laughs> definitely doesn't shy away from the media. What's so, it like? Like just growing up, knowing your dad's Peter Moody, famous trainer, amazing horses that you've sort of come into contact with. It's it's incredible. It is, yeah. Um, I'm incredibly grateful for the, the upbringing that I've had. Um, I suppose when I was younger, you don't really realise what you have. Um, you probably assume that everyone's got something similar 
in their yeah. backyard or, you know, somewhere they go on weekends. <laughs> um, no, but, I didn't yeah. have horses. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now that I'm older, I definitely have such a greater appreciation for um, mum and dad and how hard they've worked Absolutely. to get themselves where they are. You know, dad's the one that you hear about and you see on the tally, but mum's practically run that business as well for the past 20 years. Incredible. Um, and both of them, neither of them finished school. Um, so that's... Didn't they? No, they, they didn't. So that's... Um, High school dropouts. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they don't mind me saying that. Um, you know, they've been in- incredible role models. And I think, yeah, now that we're older, we really have appreciation for them and all that they've achieved. And, you know, it is, yep. it's pretty surreal heading down to now Nana Goon um, Pakenham Race Club but it used to be Caulfield and and walking in and we had incentivised there at one point who was the favourite for the Melbourne Cup and you sort of take those moments and you go wow like no not everyone has something like this and you re- you really appreciate um, what's in in front of you um, yeah it's been an incredible upbringing we've got the we've got the farm in South Belgrave too which is a slice of paradise not too far from the city and not is too far ever? out <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah very grateful and I, I yeah wouldn't swap the upbringing that I've had for the world that's awesome that's like it's so nice to have that that family history and to to be so connected in in such a unique way. I mean, you've got your your sisters at home as well. What what was it like with them, and sort of being around the farm and and all that with them? Yeah, so growing up um, with Bree and Cara. But there was a little bit of an iffy time where those two would gang up on me, but we got past oh. that eventually. Yeah, it was the little runt of the family. But, um, <laughs> look at me now. <laughs> look at me now. Yeah, you're our yeah. rock. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, we got to a point where, and it's funny to look back and, and think about it because you don't, I don't know how many younger people get the opportunities to do these things growing up these days Um, but we would find a couple of sticks in the backyard and grab a bit of dad's salami out of the fridge and venture down to the dam for the day and try to catch yabbies with salami (laughs) off a a long stick that we found (laughs) it's so good (laughs) it's an interesting one but it it kept us entertained for hours (laughs) (laughs) you don't even know what a yabby is I do know what a yabby is they're the cute little thingies (laughs) Uh, when you're in a chuga they like to eat your feet yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm aware (laughs) well we might um we might yeah venture into the gully we've got um beautiful gullies around us and we used to have an old bell out the back of the the house that mum would ring um whenever we'd been gone too long or it was starting to get dark and she'd ring that so cool that's like things from movies yeah Yeah. 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 like i I might crawl back out of the gully (laughs) yeah no so it was great like we would yeah three um three little amigos that would run off into the oh. South Belgrave bushland and keep ourselves occupied for a few hours. And Mate, that's yeah, so great. lovely. That is so lovely to hear. And like, what a what a cool upbringing and to be able to do those things. You talk about them teaming up and picking on you a little bit. Like, was there any real rivalries or anything like that growing up? Like, did you guys like fighting or was it good relationships how did how did it go i used to i used to fight a fair bit with my sister i accidentally tackled her through like the bedroom window oh. one time and it's sort of like it's a bit of a dropping point afterwards so i kind of tackled her through and then had to hold her because i was like oh if i kind of let you go you're stuffed essentially and then mum just heard the breaking of the glass and i was like I'm in trouble here, but any stories like that or anything? <laughs> yeah, there are. <laughs> Not so that brutal. No. Say they um, ganged up on me, but I guess Bree and I being twins, we were sort of in bunk beds in the same room. Um, but growing up, her and Carl also looked more alike at times than Bree and I did, which was weird. People would think that they were the twins and oh, I was really? the, the other sister. Yeah, it's quite bizarre. We went through phases where... Bree and I would look more alike, and then Bree and Cara would look more alike, and then Bree and oh, I would look more alike that's again. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah. Um, so there was a, a few occasions where I was on the outer, and we would fight like cats and dogs. Mm. Um, I think there's a few incidents where uh, we had the quad bike, oh. and there's a, a trailer hooked onto the back of the quad bike, and I think Bree was annoying me one day and <laughs> wouldn't let me drive off on the quad bike. She was standing between the trailer and the and the bike. And I just thought, ah, oh, well, stuff ya. And I took off. And she's almost, I don't know how she didn't break her legs, but she's caught somewhere between the quad bike and the trailer. Um, but didn't do any damage. 
Look at her now. How, she's, how did she's no thriving. damage happen? <laughs> it, was a, it was a time too where she's annoyed me and I threw a bunch of pool salt in her eye. Uh, could have blinded her as well. What do you do when your kids yeah. Yeah. All right. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, there's a few little incidents like that. Um, but no, all fun and games when we look back on it. I'm glad <laughs> no, one got, uh, no one got seriously hurt, which is good. I feel like we've all got stories yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. To I be love fair, it. I was much bigger than my brother and sister, so I was very overpowering and could kind of do what I wanted. So that now that I'm older, they just gang up me with, <laughs> gang up on me with like sarcasm and just like try to tear me down. So I was like, yeah, I probably karma. I probably deserve that. You just made dancing videos with them. What the the videos of you when you guys were younger? Oh. Yeah, that's when we were friends. <laughs> when we were angry at each other, that didn't happen. <laughs> but that's what you guys did was like... Yeah, yeah. Dancing you set has up always the camera been, yeah, yeah, Yes, that is true. I, I have a great video of that. And only when people are really down do I bring that video out for... Moods is all of a sudden down. Let's bring it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, dancing's always been a part of my family and, and putting on a show. So that was definitely when we we're all on the same page and, and Very loving cool. each other, then we would do the our little dance shows. I know. Yeah, Harry and Daisy. Yes, we're the three amigos for us as well. Um, just can we go back to what it was like to have a, a like a favourite, the favourite in the Melbourne Cup this, last year? Yeah. Um, inc- oh, how do I look? I'm, I'm speechless. I can't even talk about it. I suppose um, having seen, like I said, mum and dad work their asses off for twenty plus years, and and dad having never won a major until this year with the same horse. Um, Incredibly, we took out the the Caulfield Cup, which was awesome. amazing. We were obviously based at Caulfield for quite a few years and weren't able to achieve that during that time. Um, but knocked that off. Uh, sorry, last year I keep saying this year. Knocked that off last year, and then um, to have yeah him the the favourite for the the Melbourne Cup a few weeks later was. Um, I suppose a wealth of emotions we'd never experienced before obviously heightened excitement but heightened nerves um, funnily enough though you don't see a lot of the emotions with dad you assume that they must be going on internally but he keeps quite a brave face up um, but I think on the day you could see that he was yeah. up and about and, and also a little bit nervous um, unfortunately it didn't go our way and the incredible mayor very elegant got the job done and, and we finished second um, which is still at the time I Amazing. think I bawled my eyes out a little bit I just really wanted you know dad to to have that incredible success but looking back now only a couple months ago going we came second in the Melbourne Cup mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. it's not you know second in a BM 78 at wherever it was second in the Melbourne Cup like that is incredible and we might not ever reach that again or we could come out and and you know go one better but um so incredibly proud of mum and dad and I don't think I had been more proud or you know of them and everything they'd achieved until we knocked that off it was an incredible achievement and yeah I love <laughs> listening to you talk about your family because you get so passionate and so yeah, emotional with it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you spoke very articulate just then. But you do, like every time, even like off camera and off air, when you speak about your family, mm. you, it's always with such such passion and love and especially with mm. what your family does. Um, and it's it is, beautiful. it was amazing. We were, everyone at the club was going, we're like, come on, incentivize. Like this would be so amazing for the Moody family. Um, and it was, what an amazing moment for you guys yeah it was um something i think you know we'll be looking back on forever and something we'll tell the the grandkids about or hopefully we're able to tell them about the year we came second and then the year later we won it yeah exactly <laughs> but you know right after we've won the premiership with the bulldogs exactly, yep. yeah what a couple of years <laughs> that is yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> let's make that happen oh, yeah, sounds yeah why not sounds like a plan oh mate well let's circle back to footy yeah. just for a moment here obviously we're heading into what's going to be three games of footy in in what looks to be about nine days are you how are you feeling heading into it um obviously we've got gws then Fremantle, and then you know the the week after it's Whoever we play, we play. Whoever we play, we play on whatever day we, we play. But, you know, how, how are you feeling heading into such a... Like, it's it's exciting, that much footy in such a short amount of time. It is, yeah. I think I'm excited to actually be playing a game of footy again. <laughs> yeah. Which is weird. You know, we, we've played round one. We've done that. Mm. 
and then it's almost like we've mm. It's like you a know. practice game almost it, to a degree it, it, because yeah. like you like play it. and then have a break and then it's like, okay, now we're going back into the season again. Yeah, so then to have not been able to play the past couple of weeks, um, excited to be getting Good. back out there. Um, I think for me, I'll just take it one game at a time. I don't want to... Cliché, know. mate. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to flush to myself. They're true. But it's, it's what you true. have to do, yeah. especially right now, because we like anything could happen, like anything could be moved or anything like that. So you literally just have to focus on this, yeah, this first game. Yeah, if you think about them, you know, bang, 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 probably a little bit overwhelming mm. too. Um, but no, I think more excited than anything just so to good. get back out there and, and have all the girlies back. Yeah, have all oh, the girlies man. back out there wearing the wearing the uniform. Oh, oh, I love putting on the jumper. It's pretty special. And yeah. white too. Make me look a little bit tan. <laughs> oh, would you be able to put a layer of fake tan on, you reckon, oh, for I might tomorrow? just miraculously end up a little bit tanner than I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pre-game ritual. We love it. We've got to love a pre-game ritual. We love it. Well, Moods, thank you so much for, for coming on and, and sharing. It's been amazing being able to listen to you and and to hear sort of how adventurous her life is like I mean from growing up and going and catching yabbies, yabbies. I know them yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm aware with, they're an animal with, with sticks and, and salami to joining the army and, and waking up and just having to practice make sure you know how to hit a target yeah. in the morning more than I do in most mornings <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you'd hold it but anyway <laughs> close enough <laughs> and then being a footy player on top of that and then your family as well mate like it's it's amazing what you've done in, in such a short span of your life and I've no doubt there's big things to come for you especially with, with big Jimmy on your side as our ruck coach and, and supporting you throughout the year so I can't wait to be on the receiving end of some of these crafty ruck taps mate thank yeah, you yeah no thank you for, for having me on and allowing me to talk about all aspects of my life and um, I think you guys should be incredibly proud of the podcast too um, I am yeah stoked to be on here but I'm so stoked to yeah see you guys thriving mm. at, the, at the podcasting Oh, Moods. Moods. Uh, she's on next week. Uh, <laughs> You're a regular guest now, mate. Trying to get back in the good books. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in. You're in them. No, that we really appreciate that. It's been something we've been talking about for a long time. So to have it actually all coming together is really nice. And you've been an awesome guest for us today. So thank you. No, thank you guys. And another off the leash episode brought to you by the Pancake Parlor. Lovely. 